morning, guys and gals. Mr. Her here on this rainy Monday morning. Hopefully everybody's healthy, wealthy, and wise on your end. Moreover, hopefully everybody got outside to enjoy the beautiful weather uh, yesterday. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue with systems of inequalities. On Friday, we started to introduce partic particular phrases um, that help us identify inequalities. Well, today we're going to expound upon that into true word problems. Um, I can already feel you saying, Ugh, it's only two problems in our notes. It's only two problems in the homework. So I'm really going to try and make this achievable for you because I know it's super easy to get frustrated when it comes to word problems. Um, yeah, so that's our plan for today. Let's do this thing. Sorry about the spring, as always, but this is a perfect time to grab a piece of paper, pencil, and follow along. Okay? Suppose you plan to spend no more than $24 on meat for a cookout. At your local supermarket, hamburger costs $3 per pound and chicken wings cost $2.40 per pound. Write an inequality to represent the situation. Define the variables. Okay? Hamburger came first, so I'm going to call that X. This is a throwback to what we did uh, last unit with defining variables. And wings came second. I'm going to call that Y. You can certainly go the other way with it. For me, this just makes the most sense. Okay. Write an inequality to represent this situation. Define variables. So hamburger was $3 per pound. So that's going to be 3X. Plus, we're also buying wings. Chicken wings were two forty per pound. Okay, plus two forty y is no more than. No more than was one of our phrases from Friday. So that means it cannot be more than twenty four dollars. You can't spend more money than you have. So it's going to be less than or equal to. No more than implies less than or equal to. Okay. From here, it says graph your inequality, state the x and y intercepts. Okay. Um, I'm just going to look down here. Since we called x hamburger, I'm going to label that, <coughs> that axis. I would recommend you do the same thing. Here, I'm going to call this axis wings because y was wings. I'm doing a throwback here, uh, something we haven't seen in a long, long time. Since we have to state the x and y intercepts, let's find the x intercept. You might say, old timer, I have no recollection how to do that. We make y zero, so that means 3x plus 2.4 times zero is less than or equal to 24. Well, that's the same as saying 3x is less than or equal to 24. Divide both sides by. 3, x is less than or equal to 8. That's actually my x-intercept, 8 comma 0. So I'm going to come over here and make sure I don't miscount, as I almost did right there. Right there is my intercept for hamburger. The y-intercept, it's going to work out the exact same way, ladies and gentlemen. This time, though, I'm going to substitute 0 in for x. It's been a long time since we did this, so you might have to rewatch the video to make sure that you remember. But sure enough, we get 240y is less than or equal to 24. We divide both sides by 2.4. And look at that. Y works out really nicely. It's almost as if I planned it. Y is less than or equal to 10. Okay, so I come up here. Check, check. Now, we have... Our x and y intercepts, we need to find, oh, that reminds me, 0, comma 10. We need to determine what kind of line is it. Well, or equal to means it's going to be solid. And we're going to shade below that line. So we, a solution can be any point on that line. A solution could also be any point in here. Find two possible combinations of hamburgers and chicken wings you could buy. So any point here in the shaded region, just looking like right there, right there is a good point. Well, that's, let's see, that sure looked like it was five comma two, five hamburgers, well, five, 
pounds of hamburgers and two pounds of wings. That would work. That's only one of multiple combinations. You could say, I'm going to buy one pound of hamburger and eight pounds of wings. That would work too. Okay. The tricky part in this is two tricky parts, setting it up and finding your X and Y intercepts. We're going to do one more and I'm actually going to speed this one up. Um, but hopefully that's starting to make a little bit of sense. Hopefully. Okay. This one's a true system. A zookeeper wants to fence a rectangular habitat for goats. The length of the habitat should be at least 80 feet and the distance around it should be no more than 310 feet. Okay. Write a system of inequalities to represent this situation to find the variables. We're going to call y length. You could just as easily make x length. It just fits a little nicer on the graph, just throwing it out there. And therefore, x is going to be our width. If it's a rectangle, it has length, it has width. Okay. The length of the habitat should be at least 80 feet. So that means Y must be greater than or equal to 80. Okay. And the distance around, AKA the perimeter should be more the more, no more than 310 feet. Well, perimeter, that would be two times the length plus two times, oh, excuse me, two times the width plus two times the length must be less than or equal to 310 feet. No more than. That's where we get that. Okay. Graph the system of inequalities. State the X and Y intercepts. The nice thing is Y is greater than or equal to 80. That's good to go. Okay. If you're saying, well, Mr. Her, how, would, how could we do that? You could have any any line that's above y is 80. So I'm going to actually go up by 20s. You might say, Mr. Why are you going up by 20s? Um, because it just fits a little better on our graph. So that means when we graph this, it's a solid line. And anything above that is greater than y equals 80. Okay. Now, our second equation, we could do the same thing we did last time and find the x and y intercepts. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. But since this one was solved for y, I think it just makes sense in my mind to solve this one for y as well. So we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. Great. We get 2y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 310. We divide both sides by 2. y is less than or equal to negative x plus 155 because that's half of 310. So I have to label up here all the way to where I think 155 would be. It would be just below 160. And then I'm going to have a solid line because it's less than or equal to coming down like that. Okay. Here my intercept was 0, 155. Here, my intercept was 155, 0. Okay. And it's this region right in there because it must be less than. Ooh. So what are the possible dimensions of the habitat? Any point in here. You know, we could have, oh, and this goes up by 20s as well, kids. We could have 60, 80. That's right on the line, but it's in our where 60 is our width and 80 is our length. That would work. We could have 40, 100, where 40 is our width and 100 is our length. That would work because that too is in this region. You might say, well, mister, what about 20, 120? That would work. You dig? All right. Hey, sorry the video got a little long, guys and gals, but I hope this makes sense. Once again, only two questions on your homework. Have a great day. Peace.